We are live. How's it look? All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, let's grab two blocks <clears throat> or whatever you have as your makeshift blocks for today's um, practice. And then um, also make sure that you have enough room on either side of your mat to sweep the leg out to the side. We're going to be doing a little bit of um, work with the leg out to the side. <clears throat> and then start on your backs. <clears throat> Let your knees bend so the soles of the feet plant. And let your arms rest wherever they want to rest. Either anchored someplace on your body, or you could just let them be out to the sides. And take a few moments here just to let your weight, your psychic weight, your mental weight drop in. Start to let your breath drop in. And by that I mean just start to become a little more aware of the sensations of your breath. So you don't necessarily have to change very much yet. Just notice where you feel it in your body. For a lot of us, especially in this tense times, we may feel the breath a little more in the chest. See if you can direct your air a little bit lower. And then as the breath gets lower, allow it to get longer. Let's see if you can start to rest your mind in the breath. So that you start to get a sense of a little more spaciousness, not only in your body, but in your mind. So it's not that we're um, pushing out any of the thoughts or feelings or sensations that are bubbling up as we lie here, just creating a little bit of distance around them. And I like to think of filling this distance with the breath. Take a full breath in through your nose. Open your mouth, exhale. Do two more like that, full breath in through the nose. Open your mouth. One more full breath in. Exhale out the mouth. Start to get the breath going in through the nose and out through the nose. And then blink the eyes open. And pull the right knee in towards your chest. And interlace your hands very um, high up on your hamstring. And then lengthen the right leg up. Just start to circle the ankle around. Keep that breath going in through the nose, out through the nose. And then circle the ankle the other way. And then let the circling of the ankle go. Let the foot be neutral. And then bring a flex to the foot so you're peeling the toes back towards the shin. And then slide your hands a little um, lower down onto your legs, a little closer to your knee. Keeping the interlace of your fingers, start to press your right thigh bone forward, finding a little more length behind the knee. And then let the foot go, let it become passive again, let the leg become a little more passive. And then one more time like that, really get strong in the interlacing of your fingers. Press your thigh bone forward like you were trying to break through your fingers. Notice if tension has crept up into your shoulders. See if you can relax it down and back. And then let the activation of the leg go. Bend the knee. Cross right ankle over knee. Flex through the right foot. Firm up the connection between ankle and knee so that you can press this right knee forward either muscularly or maybe with your right hand. You gently press it away. And then if you'd like, you'll draw the left leg in towards you grabbing for either the top of the knee or underneath the um, thigh bone. And then just let yourself sway side to side a little bit here. You can keep the right hand pressing forward on the knee like I am, or you could bring the right hand um, to meet the left hand underneath or on top of your left leg. And then unwind the legs. 
to bring both feet flat. Then pull the left knee into your chest. Interlace your hands really high up on your hamstring, so almost um, near where your butt connects to the hamstring. And then lengthen the leg up so it's passive at first. The leg doesn't have to be totally straight. And start to roll the ankle out. You may notice that one foot feels different than the other. You may find that one direction of the ankle circling feels different from the other. And see if you can just start to kind of um, sharpen your curiosity about these differences. You don't have to analyze them. You don't have to really understand why uh, something feels different on one side than the other. Just start to you know, um, just get a little curious about the different sensations. And then let the circling of the foot go. You'll slide your hands a little higher up towards your knee. And then press your left thigh bone forward. Feel the legs start to activate, lengthen behind the knee, flex through your foot. And then let go, let the tension go. You can shake out the leg a little bit. And then one more time, lengthen the leg, press the thigh bone forward, flex through the foot, energy through the heel. And then let that go. And then cross left ankle over right knee. Firming up that connection so that you can either press the left knee forward muscularly with the outer hip, or you can assist it by pressing the um, left hand to the left knee, giving it a gentle opening forward. And then if you'd like, you'll pull the bottom leg in, grabbing either um, belly of your thigh, or your hamstring, or top of the knee. And then just let yourself move side to side a little bit here. Again, just noticing how these kind of little different shifts, these very nuanced movements, are going to change uh, the sensation, really change where you feel the line of stretch. And then bring both knees into your chest. And you're going to start to roll back and forth across the length of your spine so that you're rolling down to the very top edges of your shoulder blades and then up onto your sit bones. And then I want you to take one or two more and see if you can roll yourself up to a standing forward fold. You could use your hands if you need to, or you could just use momentum. And then once you are up on two feet, really let the upper body relax. So the knees are gonna stay really soft. This is gonna be really passive. Allow there to be a little bit of space between your feet. And then take an inhale, come up onto your fingertips. So knees. Um, may have a slight bend. For others of us, it'll be a pretty generous bend. And then walk both hands over to the left. So the fingers will point away from the left foot. You can keep the knees as bent as you'd like. And then let the head go. You can play with kind of rocking side to side. And the farther you bump your hips to the right, the more you'll feel things in the left outer line of the leg. And then pass back through center. Crawl the fingers to the right so that they point away from the right foot. Let the head go. And then same thing, side to side, wagging the hips. It's a point coloring outside the lines here. It doesn't have to be controlled. Let it be curious. Let it be intuitive. And then bring the hands forward again. And then take an inhale. Lift your sit bones up. Reach the arms forward just slightly out. And then start to lower your hips down. Again, you could use your hands if you need. See if maybe you can get the butt to lower to the mat without them. And then step the feet out straight in front of you. I'm a little kitty visitor here. Separate the feet just about hips width. And then you're going to let the knees fall over to the left. And then pick them back up, point them towards the ceiling, let them fall over to the right. And then take this at your own pace. It's kind of like your windshield wipering the legs. So you could do this without hands. You could bring the hands down to the mat just to help you facilitate this switching. Let the hips stay as loose as you can. And then the next time that the knees fall over to the left, pause. And you're gonna take your hands one outside of each knee, uh, one outside of, um, each one outside of your left knee, and then walk the hands forward, and then just fold forward slightly. You can bend at the elbows, pressing down into the whole outside line of this left leg. And then release that, shift to the other side. 
to one hand framing each side of your right knee. And then start to lean towards the right knee, folding forward. Try to keep that right sit bone down, the whole outside of the leg really plugging into the ground. And then come forward, bring your feet flat. Cross your ankles, and then roll over your ankles onto all fours. Hands right underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Tuck your toes, and with your next inhale, come forward for a cow spine. Let the belly button sink down as the chest lifts. And then exhale, round, press into the tops of the feet, let the crown of the head point straight down. And then again, inhale, tuck the toes, chest lifts, gaze lifts, cow. Exhale, round, the cat. And then take a couple more on your own. You can start to get a little creative with your cat cow. Move through the shoulders, move through the hips. Come back to that intuitive, the creature-like movement. And then bring your knees together, find a neutral spine. Look down at your hands. And then flip the right hand so that the fingers point back towards you. And now if that feels a little too aggressive on your wrist, flip up the fingers point out to the right. Slide the right leg behind you. And keeping the toes connected, start to shift forward and back. So you're opening up the Achilles, you're getting into the toes, the bottom of the foot gets a good stretch. You're also getting into the wrist. And as best you can, try to keep the heel of the hand down. And then pull the shoulders back over the wrists. Swivel the fingers forward once again. And then take a breath in, pull your ribs up, pull your belly button up into your hands. Little lift of the right leg. Really reach back through the heel. Try not to shift too much weight to the uh, left knee. And then lift the leg a little bit higher. So you can cross the right foot to the left. So you have kind of like a giant check mark in the legs. You're crossing the upper thigh bones. And then start to shift forward and back here. You'll find that it's a little more of a diagonal. You kind of let the left hip bump out to the left. And then pause with the shoulders over the wrists. So this is where you want to make sure you have um, space side to side. You're going to sweep this right leg behind you and then out to the right. And then keeping the ball of the foot and toes somewhat connected, you're gonna sweep it back on that diagonal line. So take this on your own. You can let the hips really wag side to side so that you're um, bowing one side of the waist and then the other. Let this be loose, kind of like an animal wagging its tail. And then pull that right knee back underneath you. Tuck your toes, inhale, find cow. And then exhale up and back, downward facing dog. And let yourself swivel side to side. Move however you need to move to settle in. And then take an inhale, come forward once again to your plank. And bring your knees down to the mat. Make sure they fall underneath the hips. Hands right underneath the shoulders. Zip the legs together. And then slide the left leg behind you. Look down at your hand, flip the left finger so they face either um, back towards your feet or out to the left. And then start with that shifting forward and backwards. Opening up the wrist, the back of the foot. You could start to roll around the ankle. If that feels good to get into the inner and outer edges of the, um, of the ankle and the toes. And then flip the left fingers forward. Come down um, so that your, uh, look down rather, so that your fingers are really spread. You're pressing into your hands. Pull your ribs in, belly button lifts. And then tiny little movement, you'll lift the left leg, reaching through the heel, squeezing where your glute connects to your hamstring. Then take an inhale, lift this leg a little bit higher. And then pick up the leg, cross it behind the right knee, connecting the toes to the ground. Start to shift side to side here. Moving on that diagonal, but letting the hips kind of move side to side. And then pull the shoulders back over the wrists. 
And then make this giant half circle. The left leg will drag out to the right. You may find that you need to move farther back on your mat to clear the mat. And then drag it to the right. And then to the left. So let this be really fluid like you're moving through water. Let it be swishy. Your hips will go out to one side, making a C shape in the low back, in the sideways. And then pull the left leg behind you. Bring the left knee back underneath your left hip. Tuck your toes, find cow. And then exhale up and back, downward facing dog. Take an inhale, roll forward to a plank. Pause in your plank. Activate your legs, press the thigh bones back, just like you did when you were lying on your back, activating the hamstrings. And then bring the knees down to the mat, keeping your toes tucked, sink your hips back towards your heels for a tucked toes child pose. Let the forehead rest. Take a breath in and a breath out. Then lift your gaze, look forward. Start to lift the elbows up off of the ground, press into the toes and spring forward to a plank. Then lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. We'll flow through that a couple more times. Roll forward to your plank, pause and plank. Knees meet the mat, toes stay tucked. Hips to heels, tuck toe child pose. Lift your gaze, lift your elbows. Bring forward plank, then downward facing dog. One more time, roll forward to a plank. Stay for an inhale. Exhale, knees down. Sit hips back to heels, child's pose. Take an inhale, lift your head, lift your elbows. Exhale, spring forward plank. And then up and back, downward facing dog. And start to walk your hands backwards towards your toes. Coming to a forward fold. Let the upper body really drift down. Grab opposite elbows, let yourself sway side to side. And then hands come down. Walk yourself back to that plank. And now we'll do the opposite. We'll walk our feet forward towards our wrists. You can always walk your hands back to meet yourself in the middle of the mat. Head drips heavy. Soft bend in the knees, anchor down to all four corners of the feet. And then take an inhale, lengthen the spine. Hands can slide up the shins or fingertips can stay on the ground. And then exhale, release. One more time, inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, release. Then tuck your chin to your chest. Keep the knees nice and buoyant as you slowly roll up to stand. Last thing to happen is the chin peeling up off of the chest. And come to mountain pose. Feet can be um, together or separated, whatever feels most stable for you. Let the palms spin open. Get a sense of broadening across your chest. Let the eyes close. Come back to your ujjayi breath if you kind of lost it in the motion of the warm up. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And then exhale out your mouth. Gently blink your eyes open. Take a full breath in as you reach your arms up, see your thumbs. And then as you exhale, fold forward, knees stay soft, hands meet the mat. Inhale for a long spine. And then exhale, step the left foot back. Hands plant down, step the right foot back. Bring your knees down to the mat. Pause, make sure your butt's not sticking behind you. And then we're gonna take three little push-ups here. So keep the ribs pulling towards your spine, bend your elbows to any amount. And then press up, one. Bend the elbows, press up two, bend the elbows for three, press up three, and this time lower yourself all the way to the mat in one piece. Get your pelvis and chest to hit at once. 
Take an inhale, pull forward. Let's start with a little low cobra. So the shoulders, um, heads of the shoulders roll back, shoulder blades pinch. And then exhale, forehead to mat. Again, inhale, peel up. Then tuck your toes, lift your sit bones up and back, downward facing dog. Couple rounds of breath here. So maybe you play with keeping that soft bend in the knees so that you can really lift your sit bones up and back on that diagonal. Doesn't really matter how close your heels are to the ground. We want a nice long spine, tractioning out the sides of the waist. And then with your next inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Step, step, or hop your feet in between your hands. Inhale, find a long spine. Exhale, release. Inhale to reach your arms up, stand up. And then exhale, hands come down to your sides. Let's do one more like that. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, soften, fold forward over the legs. Inhale, long spine, chest pulls forward as your shoulders soften back. Then exhale, hands flat, step the left foot back. And then the right foot back. Now you could bring your knees down like you did before, or you could keep them lifted. So you're gonna lower all the way to the ground, but do so with the same precision that you did those push-ups. So you aren't letting the tension go. Then when you inhale, pull forward. You can take another low cobra or maybe you press into an up dog using your legs like a lever. And then lift up and back, downward facing dog. Then step the feet together. Take an inhale, float the right leg long behind you. And then open the hip up, let the knee bend. I like to think of this as the hips almost yawning to the right. And then Start to make some circles with the knee here. Imagine the knee is the point of your pencil. So you're drawing circles with the knee. And again, take the time to notice which, um, which part of the circle feels the stickiest. And notice if maybe you have the tendency to rush or bypass that part. And then switch directions. And if you find that it feels uncomfortable, just pull back a little bit so you're just making a smaller circle rather than, um, rather than kind of cutting the circle uh, short. And then on the upswing, reach that right leg up and back. Pull the right knee in towards your nose, set the foot in between the hands. Come up onto your fingertips or blocks, lengthen the chest forward, really reach through your back heel. Take a fresh breath in, and then on the breath out, lift your hips up and back. Bend the left knee so that you can lengthen more through the right leg. Maybe you peel the right ball of the foot off of the ground. Really lifting that right sit bone back, and then in opposition of that sit bone reaching back, your chest is pulling forward. And then come forward, breath in, come up onto your fingertips, tall chest. Keep that tall chest as you exhale, bend the left knee, peeling the toes maybe off of the ground, maybe dragging that right heel backwards in space. And then come forward once again. Left hand will place uh, itself down on the mat, little forward of the right foot. Reach the right arm up, take a twist. Make a fist, roll out your wrist. And then switch directions. And then reach the fingertips back up. Start to heel toe this right foot to the right. So it'll come towards the middle of the mat. The right toes are facing away from you. You may need to scooch the left foot backwards in space. And then you're going to start to let your hips descend down towards the ground. So you might choose to leave the hip hovering. You could bring the hip all the way down to the ground. And do let this left shoulder kind of shrug up near the ears. Think of your figure four stretch. See if you can keep this um, right knee kind of pressing backwards. And then start to press down into your left hand, into the outer edge of your left foot. Reach this top arm back up. Bring the right hand down to the mat. Let's step back to a plank. 
And then lower down, however you'd like. You could take a chaturanga, you could take knees down, you could skip it all together and start that trait to down dog. And then in down dog, we'll zip the legs together. And then use the entire length of your inhale, sweep the left leg behind you. And then let the hip open out to the left, bending the knee. Think of pointing your knee up towards the ceiling. And then start to circle out this leg, keeping the knee bent, right? Using your knee like you would the tip of a pencil. And then switching directions. For me, the left side is much tighter, so my circle is not going to be quite as open. So just pull back if you find um, one side feels a little stickier. Take it a little slower. Breathe through the parts that feel particularly um, sticky. And then on the upswing, lengthen the leg out. Pull your knee in towards your nose, step the foot in between the hands. Come up onto your fingertips, lift your chest, reach back through your right heel. Take a fresh breath in. And then with the breath out, start to shift the hips up and back as you lengthen through the left leg. Bend the right knee however deep as you need, to really be able to pull the chest forward and find length in this front leg. It doesn't have to be pin straight, we just want it longer than it was. And then re-bend, come up onto your fingertips, breath in, breath out, lift your sit bone up and back as your chest continues to pull forward, it goes kind of um, dragging this left heel back. And then re-bend. Low lunge twist, right hand moves forward, plants down, left arm reaches up, and circle up the wrist. Get both directions. And then reach the fingertips back up. Push into the ground with your right hand, and then use that strength of the right hand to help you swivel this left foot towards the middle of the mat so your left toes are pointing away from you. You'll come onto the outer knife edge of your right foot. You may need to scoot it back a little bit. And then slowly start to let the hips descend down. Again, you could hover. You could let the bottom hip meet the mat. And then keep a long line in this left arm. Keep this left knee kind of pointing in the direction of your left fingertips. And then start to um, power up through your right arm. Press down to lift your hips up. Circle this hand back down. Step back to a plank. And then take your um, version of chaturanga or downward facing dog. And then lift up and back. Downward facing dog. Then take an inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, step or float your feet between your hands. Inhale, find a long spine. Exhale, let it go. Then inhale, reach your arms up, look up. Exhale, Tadasana, hands to your sides. And then let's step the feet a little closer together for this version of chair pose. So you'll sink the hips back, you'll sweep your arms up. Transfer a little more weight to your heels. Maybe you lift the toes. Find a little more uh, oomph in the arches of your feet. And then bring your hands together in a high prayer. Pull this prayer down your midline. And then start to shift a little more weight into the right foot. To peel the left foot off of the ground. And then step it back down. Then one more time, peel the left foot off of the ground and then step together. Then reach the arms up, sink the hips a little bit lower. Exhale, fold forward over your legs. Inhale, find a long spine. And then exhale, step back to downward facing dog. Zip the legs together. Inhale, reach the right leg up. And then step the right foot forward, right pinky toe towards your right thumb. Turn the back heel down. Pause to really power up this back leg, push the whole outside edge of the foot down, and then reach your arms up, warrior one. 
And now think of your legs here like a steering wheel. I want you to really use your right foot to steer that right hip back in space. You'll find that the left side of your torso, your left rib cage, your left hip bone, all rotate forward to keep you a little more square. Take one more breath in. And then bring the hands down to the mat. And step back, downward facing dog. Take an inhale, roll forward to a plank. Pause in your plank. Bring your knees down to the mat, keeping your toes tucked. Sink your hips back to your heel. Tuck toe child pose. And lift your head, lift your elbows, look forward. Spring forward plank. And then lift hips up and back, downward facing dog. Take an inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, step or hop your feet between your hands. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, release. And then inhale, come up for a chair pose. And then exhale, Tadasana, hands to your side. Take a moment, reset. And then inhale, chair pose once again. Hips sink back, arms lift up at the wrist, kind of knit in. Weight transfers to the heels. And then start to shift weight into the left foot so you can peel the right foot off of the ground without much shifting in the hips. And then step it back down. One more time, a little lift of the leg. And then down. Take an inhale, sit a little bit lower. And then exhale, fold forward. Hands come down to the mat. Inhale, long spine. And then exhale, step straight back, downward facing dog. Legs zip together. Inhale, left leg lifts. Then pull the left knee forward, left pinky toe steps towards left thumb, spin the right heel down, push into that back leg, use it like your rudder. Then reach the arms up, warrior one. And now you'll press down into your left foot to Pull your left outer hip backwards. You can actually even bring your thumb to the hip crease, gently guide it back. So this whole right side of your body spirals forward a bit. Take one more breath in, lift through the fingertips. Exhale, hands come down. Step back, downward facing dog. Pull forward to a plank. Pause in your plank. Bring the knees down to the mat. Keeping the toes tucked, sink your hips back towards your heels, tuck to a child's pose. And then lift your forehead, lift your elbows, look forward. Spring forward plank. Downward facing dog, hips lift up and back. And then inhale, bend the knees, look forward. Exhale, step, step, or hop feet between your hands. Inhale, find the long spine. Exhale, let it go. Then inhale, chair pose, arms lift, hips sink. And then come to stand to that, and the hands come down to your side. So now separate your feet to there together, just about inner hip width. And you'll bring your hands to your hips. Then take an inhale, lift your chest, keep a softness here in the knees so they aren't locked out. And then you'll hinge at the hips, sending the hip creases behind you. Bring your hands down to the mat. And keeping whatever softness you have in the knees, grab hold of your big toes, so you'll hook the second and third finger in between the first and second toe. And then again, keeping the knees soft, pull your chest forward, find a long spine, back of the neck nice and easy. And then exhale, pull your flat spine in towards your shins. You could bow the elbows out to either side, Use your biceps to help facilitate this stretch. And again, if this feels a little aggressive, pull back. Rather than taking it out of the practice entirely, maybe you bring your hands to blocks. Maybe you bring more of a bend to the knees. And then release your toe wind. Inhale, long spine. And then make your way back to downward facing dog. You could take a vinyasa or you could just step back. And then zip the legs together. 
Take an inhale, float the right leg long behind you. Let the hip open up, bend the knee. And then keeping the knee bent, square off your hips, pull your knee in towards your nose. Then shift your right knee towards your right elbow. You're gonna make a circle up and back to end where you started. And this bent knee three leg down dog. Let's take that one more time. Pull the right knee in towards your nose, shift the shoulders forward. Right knee moves towards your right elbow and then it circles up and back. So you've got like this scorpion tail. And then pull the right knee straight to your nose. Step the right foot in between your hands. And then come up onto your fingertips, pull the chest forward. And then reach the arms up, high lunge. And then start to let the torso pitch forward slightly. The arms will slide backwards. So it's like you're making one long diagonal line here. The crown of your head is the top of the line, the back heel is the end of the line. And then start to sweep the arms forward. Start to shift weight forward and step the left foot in to meet the right chair pose. Then lengthen the legs, hands come down. Let yourself release the quads. And then again, chair pose. Sink the hips back, arms lift. And just like before, you're gonna start to shift a little more weight into the right foot. So you can pluck this left foot off of the ground and then start to reach back through this left foot so that you can float back into a high lunge. It doesn't have to be a big lift for now. And then again, pull your chest forward, find that diagonal line. This time you'll hold. Think of steering that right hip back. And then keep the right arm behind you, reach the left arm forward. And then switch. Right arm reaches forward as left arm pulls back. Again, left arm swings forward. Right arm swings forward. Last time, left arm swings forward. This time, let it open you up into a warrior two. Arms go long, deep bend in the right knee. Take an inhale, reach your arms up. Pivot on your right heel, turn the right toes to face forward, so they're parallel with the left. And then open up to the back of the mat for a warrior two, so now the left knee is bent. Right foot parallel to what was once the front of the mat, now is the back of the mat. Take a few moments here, settle into your warrior two. Flip your front palm. Inhale to reach up and back, reverse your warrior. And then bring this left forearm to the left thigh. Sweep this right arm down, up and around, so that you can rotate to look up and underneath your right armpit. And then keep that back leg strong, just like a warrior one leg. And then think of this left hip the left outside of your hip, wrapping underneath you. Take one more breath in. And then hinge yourself back up to stand lengthen your legs. Pivot on the left heel, toes are parallel. And then pivot the right toes forward again. From here we're moving to triangle pose, legs long. You'll cut this right hip back as the right hand comes to the right shin, or you could use a block. And then just like that extended side angle you were just in towards the back of the mat, you want to pull the front outer hip. This time it's the right outer hip underneath you. This front, um, this back left hip will rotate forward slightly. Take one more breath in. And then with the breath out, look down. Bring both hands down inside of your right foot. Spin onto the ball of the back foot. And then heel toe this right foot way out to the right. The right toes will point out to the right. They may even come off of the mat. Hands will come flat. Lift your hips. And then step the left foot outside of the left hand. Come down to your squat. You're welcome to use blocks underneath you. You could make this a higher squat, lifting the hips up and back rather than pointing them down. And let yourself move side to side a little bit. You could find an arm extension, reaching the left arm out, peeling open to the right. And then switching. You could find a bind, wrapping your hands behind you. And 
Take one more round of breath here. And then come back through center. Push your heels even more firmly into the mat. Find a little bit of a lift in your tailbone. So now this becomes a little more muscular. Think of pressing your knees out, fire up the hips. And then big breath in, stand all the way up, reach your arms up. Tailbone pulls underneath you. And then bring your hands down to your sides, bring the feet back towards one another, toes face forward. Take an inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale to soften, fold forward. Inhale, long spine. And then make your way back to a downward facing dog. Zip your legs together. Use the full breath to lift your left leg behind you. Bend your left knee, peel open to the left. And then keeping the knee bent, square off your hips, pull your left knee in towards your nose, your shoulders shift forward. And then move the left knee toward the left elbow. It's just gonna pass for a moment to complete the circle. Lift the leg behind you, come back to that bent knee down dog split. One more time, square off the hips, pull the left knee forward, and then big circle, it passes to the left, up and around. Then pull the left knee forward. Set the foot in between your hands. Low runner's lunge, come up onto your fingertips, use blocks, just organize the shape from the ground up. Front foot firm, back heel reaching long behind you. And then press down into your feet, Lift your arms, lift your torso by lunge, like spinning the inner thighs together. And then start to pitch this shape forward. Your chest pulls forward as your arms sweep back. Like you are reaching back for something through your fingertips. Crown of the head pulls forward. And then legs stay as they are. You just sweep the arms forward, biceps by ears. And then step right foot forward to meet left chair pose. Lengthen the legs, Tadasana, hands to your sides. Bring your feet just to inner hips width or slightly closer if that feels better. And then again, it's a chair pose. Arms lift, hips sink. And now this time we're going to shift weight into the left foot. I'm going to pluck that right foot off of the ground. It's a small under the radar. Sweeping back of the right foot to float me back into that high lunge. And then again, I'll pull the chest forward to sweep the arms back, long diagonal lunge. And then I'll swing the right arm forward, keep the left arm reaching back, and then switch. And then switch, right arm pulls forward, left arm pulls forward. Last time, right arm pulls forward and sweeps me into a warrior two, arms long. Left knee bent. And then lengthen the front leg, pick up the toes, pivot on the heels. Open up to a warrior two towards the back of the mat. So now the right knee is bent. And take a moment here. Strong back leg, pushing into the outside edge of the foot. Lift the front palm. Inhale to reach up and back, reverse warrior. Then elbow comes to thigh. Sweep this left arm down and forward. Rotate open in the ribcage. Looking up and underneath your left armpit. And then think of pulling this right outer hip underneath you. Like the, like the hip is trying to drag towards your back heel. Then come back up to stand, lengthen the legs, pivot on the ball of the right foot. Left toes face forward. Cut this left hip back, it's triangle pose. Hand can come to shin block. Just so long as you can keep weight, uh, length rather, in both sides of your waist. Keeping the weight from crashing down into the front shin. Pulling this left outer hip underneath you. Start to sweep the top arm forward. Let the hands come down inside of the left foot. Bend the left knee. 
And then heel toe this left foot out to the left. Let the left toes point away from you. Hands come flat. Lift your hips. And then step the right foot outside of the right hand. Come back down to your yogi squat. And then you have a couple options here. You could stay with blocks underneath you. Let your eyes close. Use this as an opportunity to come back to your breath. You could take one of the binds. If you have a crow in your practice, you could come into the arm balance. About two more breaths here. And then we'll meet in a downward facing dog. You can get there however you'd like. And down dog, step the feet together. We'll move through this sequence together with a little more fluidity. So inhale to reach the right leg back. Bend the knee over the hips. Pull the right knee in toward you. Make a big circle. Reach up and back with the knee. Again, knee comes forward. Knee comes towards the right elbow. Loop it up and back. Then lengthen the leg out, pull the knee in towards your nose, step the foot in between the hands. Come up to a high lunge. Strong legs, lifted torso. Then start to swing the arms back as you pull the chest forward. Swing the arms forward, step to chair. Lengthen the legs, Tadasana. Inhale, chair pose. Pluck that left foot off of the ground. Send it back behind you, land in your high lunge. Pull the chest forward, arms reach back. Left arm reaches forward. Switch, right arm reaches forward. Left arm forward. Right arm forward. Last time, left arm reaches forward and opens you up into a warrior two. Lengthen the legs, pivot on the heels. Left foot faces forward, warrior two to the back of the mat. Flip your front palm. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, supported side angle. Arm sweeps up over your head. Pull the left outer hip underneath you. Then stand up straight legs. Triangle to the front of the mat. Hinge at the hips. Stay light in the right fingertips. Top arm pulls forward. Bend the front knee, low runner's lunge, both hands inside of the right foot. Heel toe that right foot to the right. And then this time, let's just take a wide lunge, reach the right arm up. And then right hand comes down. And then make your way back to downward facing dog. Sit the legs together. Inhale, left leg lifts. Bend the knee, peel the hips open. Pull the bent knee in towards your nose. Big circle with the hip as the knee passes the left elbow, lift up and back. One more time, pull the knee in towards your nose. Big counterclockwise circle. And then pull the knee in towards your nose, step the foot in between the hands. High lunge, lift the arms, lift the torso. Pitch forward as the arms sweep back, long diagonal lunge. Sweep the arms forward once again, and then step forward, chair pose. Tadasana, hands to your sides. Breath in, come back to chair pose. Pluck that right foot up, and then reach it behind you. Land in a high lunge. Arms sweep back, chest pulls forward. Right arm sweeps forward, left arm stays back. And switch, and switch, and switch. Last time, right arm reaches forward. It opens you up into warrior two. Lengthen the front leg, pivot warrior two, back of your mat, bend the right knee. Flip your front palm, reverse, big breath in as you reach. 
Elbow to thigh, sweep that left arm down and forward. Rotating at the rib cage, pulling the right hip underneath, left hip underneath you. And then bring yourself back up long legs. Pivot triangle, left foot forward. Cut the left hip back, reach down. Top arm pulls forward. It pulls you down into a low runner's lunge. Put both hands inside of the left foot. Bend the front knee, scoop that left foot to the left. And then it's a wide twist. Left hand comes down. And then step back, downward facing dog. And then take a slow walk forward, top of the mat. Let your feet be about inner hips width distance apart. Let the head go, let the knees stay soft. Take a moment here, catch a deeper breath. And then slowly roll yourself back up. And step the feet together. Let there be just a little bit of space between the feet. And then inhale for a chair pose. Now it's your choice with arms, they could stay lifted. They could come to your heart, pressing the hands together just for a little more pressure. I find that this helps me stay a little more stable. You'll pluck the left foot off of the ground. And now this time you'll cross left ankle over right knee, coming into a figure four chair. Keeping the chest lifted. See if you can pull that right outer hip back in space, almost like warrior one. And then start to lengthen the bottom leg. Pull that left knee into your chest, get strong in your right leg. Hold for a breath in. And then reach the arms back up, chair pose. And we'll switch. So now you'll shift weight into the left foot as you pick the right foot off of the ground. Again, hands can stay up or come to prayer. Cross right ankle over left knee. Start to shift your hips backwards. Notice if the left hip is poking forward, can you spiral it back? And then start to lengthen through that bottom leg. Lift the right knee to your chest. Put the right foot down, chair pose. And then exhale, fold forward. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, step back to a plank. And lower yourself all the way down. Inhale, pull forward. And then exhale, just let the forehead rest. You can bring your hands underneath your head underneath your forehead, let it be a little pillow. Let the hips move side to side. And then just turn over onto your backs. <clears throat> Bend your knees. And set up as though you were going to do a regular bridge pose, but then we're gonna cross right ankle over left knee. And then you can bring your hands down to your sides. You could bend at the elbows, kind of use the upper arms <clears throat> as a little booster to help you lift. I want you to press down into your left foot, lift the hips for a figure four bridge. Notice which hip wants to droop. See if you can keep both hip points even. And then strong moment, keep pressing into your left foot, pull the right knee into your chest. Bring the right foot down. And then lower the hips down. Let the hips move side to side. And then we'll reset. Cross the left ankle over the right knee, figure four. And the stronger you can get in the connection between ankle and knee, the easier it'll be to keep this um, left knee pushing forward. And then press down, lift the hips. So you probably won't get as much of a back bend here as you would with both feet down. 
So that's totally fine. You want to work the back of the legs here. Keep the hips nice and even. And then strong moments, pull the left knee in towards your chest. Step the left foot down. And then lower the hips down. <clears throat> and let the hips move side to side. And then we can take one more bridge, one more back bend. You could take a back bend um, or a bridge rather with both feet down. If you have a full wheel in your practice, hands could come by the ears. You'll lift up onto the crown of the head and lengthen through the arms. Or you could slide blocks underneath your back, take a restorative bridge. And then separate your hands. Lower your hips down to the ground. Take your knees to your chest. Just make a couple of circles without squeezing the knees. Or squeezing the knees towards the chest. And then pull your knees towards your armpits. So grab for either the outsides of your feet. You could grab for your shins. You could even grab behind your knees. Seem a happy baby. Let yourself move side to side a little bit. Figure out what you have to do to keep your tailbone flat rather than having it curl up. Again, maybe that means picking a different place on your legs to, um, to grab. And then bring the knees back to the chest. Let's pull the right knee in. Draw the right knee to the left. Take a gentle twist. And then come through center. Let's switch. Left knee pulls in. Right leg long. And then pull the knee to the side. And then come to lie flat. One at a time, lengthen the legs out in front of you. Let your arms rest wherever feels best. Notice where your mind starts to go as the body moves back into stillness where we began. Come back to that idea of just letting the mind rest in your breath. Slowly start to let the breath fill out once again. Start to bring some movement back to your fingers, to your toes. So then take your time, rolling over onto one side. And bring yourself back up to a seated position. Find a long spine. Take a moment here. See how you feel. Notice the shifts that have taken place. Notice how your breath quality has changed. Maybe how the quality of your attention has changed. And bring your hands together. And let's close together with a final deep breath in. And exhale out. Thank you so much, guys. Um, have a wonderful rest of um, 
your sunny day. At least open the windows. And um, hope to see you guys back here. I'm here Monday. Uh,